Hey Nathan here, welcome to a brand new series covering C++ and this is to get everybody ready for DirectX which we will be using C++ for that and I'm using Visual Studio 2012 and I'm going to assume that there will be some people that have not done any programming or don't know C++ or do not know Visual Studio so I'm going to, this is going to be a introduction to the language to get people ready for the DirectX series. Okay, so this series, you know, it'll cover the basics. This tutorial is just going to be an introduction to the Visual Studio. I'll discuss a few things, you know, where the code is, what the Solution Explorer is, and all this all sorts of stuff. How do you create a new project? And uh, how do you use Visual Studio in general? I will not discuss everything. You know, the more dialogues or more windows we'll get into later on as we develop. But just the basics. Here's the coding. Uh, where's the error list? What is the solution explored? You know, just the basics that you will see in every file that you work on in Visual Studio. Now I'm using the professional version of Visual Studio. If you want to get a the Express Edition, you can go to Microsoft's Visual Studio page. And by the way, they do have the 2013 preview. So if you want to give 2013 a try, you can do that. But they do have the Express Editions available. You can download the Express Editions uh, for Windows 8, for Windows Desktop. You can download the Express Editions for those and play around with that if you want to. You can also get the trial versions of the actual full versions. You can download the trials for that. So you see here's the professional one and it is a 90 day trial that you can download. I think it is 30 days and then you have to register to get the 90 days yeah here we go you can try it for up to 30 days you can extend your trial period to 90 days by registering to obtain a free trial product key so you get free 30 days and it's free to register to obtain the product key you just have to go through that extra process but I'm I actually paid for professional 2012 and I actually paid for it a few months ago so I will not be getting 2013 for at least another year. So I will stay with 2012. Okay, so this is what... I think this is what the basic... When you first install 2012, I think this is what it looks like. I do not like the way that this looks. So I go to Options, and I change it to Blue. And then it basically looks like Visual Studio 2010. You know... It gives a lot more contrast. You know, we have white and then dark blue instead of just everything looking all dark gray. I like this way a lot better. I also got the extensions. I also got the Visual Studio 2012 color theme editor. And I disabled that to show you what the default options come with 2012. You can get that if you want to. And then, you know, there are a few samples here that you can see. It just makes it look a little bit different. I'm going to stick with the blue since that's what comes with the Visual Studio. Okay, okay, so this is the start page. When you first open up Visual Studio, you'll see this page, you know, welcome. You can click these. You can click these links and it'll take you to a page that discusses how, what whatever you click. So welcome. What's new in Visual Studio? If you click this, it'll tell you what's new in Visual Studio. On the left here, we can start a new project, open a project, or connect to a Team Foundation server. If you had any projects open before, they'll be in your recent lists here. And I'm getting ready for the DirectX series, so I have a whole bunch of DirectX stuff. And I did load up XNA in Visual Studio 2012, and I tried that out. And the Solution Explorer is on the right side. Alright, so let's 
create a new project. Let's collapse Visual C Sharp and let's go to other languages. Your setup might be different. And let's go to Visual C++. Let's do a Win32 console applications. And I'm going to change the projects here from DirectX to C++. So I'm just going to do CPP. And it's episode 0 because it's just a basic introduction. And then I'm going to label this tutorial 0. I'm going to create a directory. So I'm choosing a Win32 console application. I give it a name, Tutorial 0. I give it a location for the projects. It's going to create a directory for the solution. And then the solution name is also Tutorial 0. I'm going to click OK. And then I'm just going to go ahead and click Finish for now. I'm just going to bring up a basic code in here and show you what the dialogues and windows here look like. Okay, so over here we have our coding. You'll see the code here, what I have highlighted. And we'll get into all this in the next tutorial where we'll actually discuss the coding. In the Solution Explorer, the Solution Explorer is a way to organize all of your files and all of your projects. If you have multiple projects in a single solution, you can have, it'll organize all those. And then you can see files in each project in both a source files they're separated into folders and then they have a readme in there as well that you can open up so that this solution explorer is where all the files all the resources all the headers everything relating to this solution and this project are in here so if you have multiple projects for a single solution they will be listed here then you can expand or collapse each folder and project and all that stuff. The Team Explorer, I'm not going to go into. I've never used that before, so I, I will not discuss that. Under the Solution Explorer, we have a Properties dialog box, and if you use Windows Forms, if you go into C++ and develop a Windows Form application or anything that's complicated, you know, you can click a button and then the properties will show up. Like if I click a project, the properties will show up. If I click the solution, the properties will show up. So that's useful for, you know, in Windows applications, Windows Forms application where you can click a button and then in the properties, you know, you can set the button title, the, bet, the way the button looks, uh, the position of the button. If you want to modify it in a actual X, Y coordinate exactly where you want it to be, that's what the properties are for. You can also do it in the code if you want to, but the properties will give you that basic capability. And as you see, if I click a project or a solution, I have some options available in the properties. The error listing down here at the bottom left. I keep mine auto hidden, which you can do that by clicking the little down arrow here and then auto hide. And then it'll automatically be hidden. And the error listing are if you do anything weird in your coding, like int AAA3, you know, that doesn't mean anything, that it's obviously an error. So that tells you the error. You can double click the error and it will take you to that spot. And then it will tell you the you know the line number where it's found the file and then you can just double click it and it will take you there. So that is what the error listing is for. The toolbox. Uh again that's mostly used for Windows Forms application. You go to the toolbox and then you, can, you get a button. You can drag the button onto the Windows Forms. And then you can visually design the window form by using the toolbox. And then you can expand and collapse the each section of the toolbox. Okay, so we have menus up here. And we'll get to all these stuff later on. 
but the most one most popular ones you will use are build and debug. So building will just build your solution or build the specific project you're on. Building solution as you see here, we have a project, tutorial zero. We have a solution, tutorial zero. A solution can have multiple projects. So if you build a solution, you build every project in that solution. If you have only tutorial zero selected, like if I have a tutorial one inside this solution, it'll and I go to the build and build tutorial zero, it'll only build that project. Rebuild, you know, build does an incremental build. Rebuild will rebuild the whole thing. Clean solution will do what it says. Clean, it'll get rid of all the bin and the object. Debugging. Debugging is very useful for when you're developing. When you are developing and you want to test your program, you can do a build and then test it that way. Debugging will allow you to run the code that you have written, and whenever something breaks, it'll take you to that portion of the code. If you just build it and run the final version, and then something breaks, it'll say, Program X is not responding. I'm sure most of you have seen that. You've used computers a long time to see something like that, where a program will crash. And then you'll get a Windows dialog saying program X has stopped responding. Close or, you know, check for solutions or close or cancel. So that's when it encountered an error that it did not recover from that was not caught and the whole program just shut down. So when you debug and you encounter a situation like that, like if you divide by zero, for example... It'll take you to that portion of the code where the divide by zero is happening. So those are pretty much the two things that you will always be using. Every project we will build a executable and we will debug it and see what's happening in there. We will debug it first and see if anything breaks. And then I'll walk through the debugger in a couple of episodes. I'll set up a breakpoint and then we can analyze, you know, object we have an integer variable. What does that variable have? We can inspect that in the locals. And then we can look at the call stack and see what's going on there. And that will be for a later tutorial. Uh, that Those are pretty much the most common things you will be using. We'll get to all this other stuff later on. But for now, uh, this is just the basic setup. Okay, so that is it for this tutorial. I wanted to keep it under 15 minutes, so that's good. Next tutorial, we'll actually go into the coding and discuss what this and this means. And then we'll also go into variables. So I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you will enjoy this series, getting ready for the DirectX series. And I hope you will enjoy C++. It's a little bit tricky once you first look at it but once you understand it um uh, you know it's pretty nice language to use and again i'm using visual studio 2012 professional you can get the express editions for free you can get the trials for free for 30 days 90 days if you register you can look at the 2013 preview editions which you can get for free it's a preview, you know, it hasn't been fully released yet, so it's a preview edition of that. I will not be using that, because I just bought 2012 a few months ago, and I will not buy 2013 until probably next year. So, I'll see you next time, where we'll discuss what you see in the code here, and some variables.